Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. This is the show where we talk about the things you wish you were talking about. Money. And we're going to make it fun because a lot of times it's not. And I think that needs to change, Rachel. I agree, George. Well done. Well done. And this episode specifically, we're going to talk about did HGTV ruin our generation and our bank accounts? It is a question we all have. statement, Rachel. (laughs) Coming out the gate. Can we just have a little fun first? I know, I know. But we're going to talk about some facts around just the housing market and even our emotions towards our houses. George and I are both homeowners, so you'll hear some of those stories. And we're also going to give you some ways that you can actually update your current home without spending a ton of money. Absolutely. But before we get to it, it's called Smart Money Happy Hour, which means we have a drink in hand. And the way this goes, we just keep going until one of us finishes the drink. No matter how disgusting I might find it, Rachel. Well, I, I get the feeling, George, you're not happy with this one so far. It's this was my fine. pick. I'll be honest. It was Tell my pick. what it is. It's a screwdriver. I don't know why you don't like, how you can't like a screwdriver. It's orange juice, which is fantastic. Well, the listeners are going to have to wait with bated breath till the end of the episode where they get our rating, they find out how much it costs, and we give them the recipe to try to make it at home. And George might complain some more, so just prepare your hearts. That's part of it. Uh, but those of you that don't know who we are, maybe you found us on some crazy algorithm that just popped up some ad or maybe a friend told you because they are out there that could be another episode we can get all into that uh but george camel he has multiple podcasts really talking about the dark side of money all the traps everything that's out there and he's married to whitney who personally i just love her so much and he has two dogs they have two dogs and i think george (laughs) i've decided he likes the dogs more than people that's 100 percent true dogs don't talk back (laughs) And Rachel, you've been helping people with money now for over 15 years, and you've got your own show. And on top of that, you love a good reality TV show. That is true. You love the drama. Give me like the Bachelor franchise. Give me uh, a Real Housewife from the OC. Oh, dear. Or Beverly Hills. That is something we disagree heavily on. So fantastic. So let's get back to it, Rachel. You ready for this? Did HGTV ruin our generation and bank accounts? Strong yes. statements. <laughs> Just coming in hot. We are. Because housing, number one in the market right now, is just crazy. It's slowed down a little bit. It's a little bit, the market is a little soft, if we're going to use the lingo. But, you know, whether it's apartments or condos or houses, number one, they're just more expensive than ever today. And I think our expectations are so different thanks to social media, thanks to things like HGTV. And we just expect a whole lot more than we did even when we were kids. Like, can we just go back to the oh, 90s? childhood can we houses? Go, can we go? And we're, George and I are on the same age. So like the 90s, 90s kids. that was our generation, right? So like the early 90s, what was your house like growing up in the early 90s? Oh my goodness. I mean, it was, we had one tiny bathroom. I'm talking like you couldn't open the door without hitting, hitting someone on the toilet. It was that small, <laughs> and four of the, us shared it. For the ah, one for the house. Yep. yep. My childhood bedroom. I could, with my arms out, I could touch both walls. And I'm tiny. Mm-hmm. It was okay. that small. Can I can I ask like a personal question? Where would yeah. you place yourself, like lower, uh, um, like I, like middle class or lower class? Yeah, I feel like we were middle class. Okay. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, like my parents were immigrants. They worked hard. They had good jobs. They they had education. So I never felt like we were struggling. Yes. But it also never felt like like our friends are the ones that have the pool. You know, it's like, oh, they have the money. Yes, totally. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because that's what I'd say. I'd say we were middle class, but it was like a triplex. I mean, you, we always shared a bathroom, the kids. Oh, yeah. Um, there yeah, was no, and like, Jack mom, and Jill bathrooms No, and back even then. the closets, even mom and dad. Like, I remember even, like, they had just one big closet in that. You know what I mean? Not big closet. No, I, I shouldn't say big. They just had one closet. Where now— it's like, oh my gosh. It's a requirement. There's, like, there's so much. It's a traumatic childhood if you had to share a room. And the doors. I just remember the doors even like being hollow. Like oh, when you close them, yes. they're so thin. So thin. All that kind of stuff. And nowadays, it's come man, a long way. I don't know. Have we changed or society changed yours? I think both. <laughs> I think there's higher standards now. I know. Because of social media and because of television, which, you know, was around before social media. Let me remind you. So HGTV started back in 1994. You were in first grade? Mm, I was in yeah, kindergarten. Yeah, I guess that'd be about right. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. Simpler times. <laughs> uh, Lion King had just come out. Seinfeld uh, was the number one show. It really was simpler times. Those were good days. And uh, it used to be called the Home, Lawn, and Garden Channel. Mm. And later it just changed to HGTV. They took out the lawn for some reason. Yeah. We're done with lawn. No yeah. one wants to watch we don't a see channel a of a guy mowing nope. his lawn. Show me a bathroom. Show me a, a 
a redone bathroom. Uh, so you remember the show This Old House? Were you are you old mm-hmm. enough to remember mm-hmm. that? I don't think I remember that one. Well, uh, that and TLC, which... Oh, TLC, yep. Yeah. All I think of is like my 600-pound life or whatever, like those kinds of shows. <laughs> they had a good one about clothes, though. The, um... Oh, jeez. Never mind. Keep moving. I, can't I feel like it. the point of any of those shows is to make you go, oh, I guess my life's not that bad. Be- best or, dress. My, better dress. My life is not What's good it, What enough. was it called? Better dr- what not to wear. What not to wear. That was that was the show I Hot watched. Hot television. Mm-hmm. But the number one show on HGTV over time was House Hunters. <laughs> yes. That one is hilarious to me. It's so funny. Whenever they ask them about their jobs, yes. I'm always so confused. So obscure. They're like, my husband uh, catches butterflies part-time and I stay at home <laughs> with the kids. Our budget, $1.4 million. And I'm like, what? How is this happening? How is this happening? I'm, so in, pu- I'm in puppetry, and our budget is 2.3. And you're like, wait, 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 what? Crushing the puppet game, What I are you guess. doing? I know. Yeah, their jobs are always a little obscure. But the trends have changed over time, and now there's higher standards. You know, now it's— Yeah. There was shiplap and board and batten. I just learned about wainscoting because of my oh, wife. Oh, yes. We beautiful. just moved. It's all the rage among the youth. Yes. And it so, is a beautiful. It is but beautiful. because of social media and cable, we're just— We have a picture in our minds of what our house needs to be. Our very first home has to yes. be beautiful and immaculate. I know. And, like, the high ceilings. I mean, all of this stuff. Large baseboards, right? Like, if you get really down to it. Well, now we're so ripping specific. out all the carpet to get back to the hardwood. It used to be that if you had carpet, it was like a sign of wealth and luxury. Yes. And I had an aunt and uncle who covered their couches in plastic wrap. Oh, you know yes, about that? Yes, I do. I don't know if it's a Middle Eastern thing, but oh no, that was, was like, uh, that, no, that's a generational thing. But like that the living room was like a museum. Like you didn't touch it, you didn't go near it. No one ever sat there. It was like reserved in case like a king happened to be at your house. You I know, don't know. I, and I feel like I've heard this stat though, but I even wonder the square footage of a house from like the 1970s yes. to the square footage today. And again, it's just the expectation of society of what we expect, not what we need. Not what we need, but what we want. And it's so hard, though, because then it makes you discontent, all of this stuff. I don't know. But That's you know tough. who ruined HGTV for me? But I love them. Like, want to oh, be absolutely. BFF. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Chip and Joe? Chip and Joe, man. She, she does the most amazing designs. And I do think there's something to be said about having a home That's that you love. Pleasing. That That is. That you walk in, you're like, oh, wow, this works. And I don't know. I'm not a creative, but I'm like, where you know when you walk into a room, this is beautiful, but it also feels warm. It's nice. like Functional. Yeah, like we want to enjoy our spaces for sure. So we're not saying that, but man, it can make you really discontent. We're like, I want all of that. It should yes. out though. I feel like it is. I personally think it's out. Yeah. But that could just be me. I'm not hip with the trends. Like my wife is very hip with the trends, but then I'm worried because I'm like, well, next year she's going to need to paint the cabinets a different color because it's not the color of the year anymore. It's true. So I like timeless. Yes. I'm, I like mid-century modern personally. Oh, well, I feel like that's a, very, very specific. Mid-century modern, but Take it's come back. on that one. Oh my gosh. It it's looks come good. back? Yeah. What is it? Uh, you know, it's the it's a lot of like walnut and leather mm. and oh, yeah. you know, kind masculine. of the peg leg. You sound a little masculine. That's me as a descriptor <laughs> that many, many people have used <laughs> to describe me. But Rachel, I want to talk about your first home. Yes. What was it? Was that not beautiful? growing up like as adult? Yeah, as an adult. As an adult, like, you got your own yep. space. So Winston and I, we got married young. So right after college, married. And we actually, because it was 09, so we bought during the crash of real estate. Oh. So ours was a short sale. The whole bank, like the place where we where we got our house, even the development, it was like half finished and the builders went under. So the bank owned like all of these properties. So anyways, long story short, bought was it from a the bank. Was upper? No, no, it was like a brand. I think one other family had lived there. Okay. Actually, they were renters that lived in it. And then the bank and the bank bought it and like, I don't know, even know. No, it was like a two-year-old house. Yeah, but it was in short sale, all of it because of the, because it was the recession, the wow. real estate bubble. So anyways, so we ended up getting a much larger house than we could have afforded today, right? Like if you fast forward to the today we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, but because it was in short sale, we did. And we had no, we had like no furniture drawer. It's like we moved into this house and it was like. It was just like lawn chairs in there? Uh, we bought, and I'll never forget this, we went to a furniture store. We bought a sofa, a coffee table, a kitchen table, and then our bedroom. Like a king bed, wow. two nightstands, and like a TV, what do you call it? Like a, not a dresser, but like, like a. media stand? Yeah, 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 thing okay. in our room. That was it. That's all we had. And so you walked in and it was like. 
I mean, every, now every it's other cool. room was Now it's empty. minimalist, right? I know. Apparently. To not have a lot of stuff. But it was interesting. So I was like, oh, gosh. And that was one part because we both believe in living debt-free lifestyles. And that was a moment that I thought, okay, I get, I get how people go into debt. Like, I could furnish this whole house. You could go 90 days, same as cat. You know, do oh, all yeah. the furniture. Furniture stores love that. They're totally. like, nothing down. You can pay over 19 years. Yes. And I'm like, I get it. Because it was discon- I was discontent when I'd walk in the house. There was like a little bit of embarrassment of like, this just looks awkward. And it was bare for a good year and a half or so. Mm. And we slowly filled it up. But like, oh my gosh, yeah. It wasn't, it was a great house because of the time we bought but there was nothing in it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, up until marriage, I was, I mean, I still am very frugal, but I was just like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I couldn't even bring myself to buy like new furniture. Really? Yeah, I just, I, you know, it's the so college like, age mentality. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. still have some pieces that still work from from those days. But once I got married, Whitney was like, yeah, that's got to go. I know. <laughs> we're not doing that. That couch has seen some things. That we're not doing. I know. I... And maybe it's a, I don't know. I'm probably a little bit more high maintenance on that. Winston would be totally fine secondhand and all of it. He's a simple man. He's a simple man. He doesn't need much in life. I have a hot take, Rachel, I'm going to share with you. I think one of the reasons people are broke is because they don't have functional, beautiful spaces to live in. So this is not like pro making poor decisions when it comes to decorating your house and upgrading. But I do think the reason you want to go out with friends and get out of your apartment or whatever is because you get your apartment and you hate it. And so or you your just house, want to leave. Or your yeah, or yeah. your house, wherever yeah. it is. And so I think there is some truth in that. If you have a beautiful space, you it can actually help your budget in a weird way. Yeah, I could see that. But you can get a beautiful space and it not like make you broke. And I mean, you, you can, can take do a it. space that had, you know, needed some love. Yes. And you can add the right lighting and furniture and all kinds of things to make it way more livable and buy you some time. Yes. Because a lot of people true. right now are going, I hate where I live. I want to move somewhere better, but the housing market's insane yep. and the average house is four hundred thousand dollars. Right, right, right. Totally. That's a real I feel that. Yep. No, I I, I get that. Absolutely. But it's fascinating. Anyway, our our living situations, man, it's and our expectations. But expectations. there are some I just moved and so had to upgrade their house. On a budget, here's my recommendations for you if you're looking to do that. Okay. Number one, we set up a separate Google Sheet with the entire budget of how much we had to spend, what we wanted, what we thought it would cost, what it actually cost, and we measured that constantly to see where we were at, what we could afford. Next, I was looking for the best deals possible. So I was looking for promo codes, coupon codes. Can I get it used from Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist? Can I get a deal at Target? Can I go to Home Goods for this versus going to expensive furniture stores? And lastly, sticking to the budget. It's easy to see the couch of your dreams and it's $4,000. And you're going like, I can't afford this right now. So find a dupe. Here's a hack. Find a picture of that. You can upload it to the Google app under the images section, and it will show you <gasps> all of the items that look just like that and Brilliant. show you the prices, and it's a great way to do your research and find deals. So smart. You know, and when Wince and I, when we got new furniture at our house, we always looked at, like, the investment pieces or the pieces that are just, like, we're going to go a little I cheaper. Like and the places that are used the most, the most high-trafficked area, a.k.a. where our kids are, cheap. I'm like, I'm not, I cannot buy an expensive couch because I know it I'm going to be destroyed. changing diapers on that couch. The kids are crawling all over with their shoes. Like, I can't emotionally do that. But we have two rooms in the house. I was like, oh no, I can get like a nicer rug here. There were places that I put like my money, I feel like, with yes. like those investment things and the stuff that I know we're going to replace because it's high trafficked areas of the house go simple. Because I also didn't want to buy new furniture and sit there and be like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Don't and, sit and, there. Don't sit yeah, there. It's like, feel, it's a couch. It's made for sitting. Feel the anxiety. I'm like, I want to have freedom in my life and enjoy. And if I pay too much for it, I know in the back of my mind, I'm going to be just like, have a pet peeve the whole That's time. A good call. So I'm like, I just want to enjoy and let my kids go and enjoy life. Cause and they, if they take a Sharpie to it. So and be then it. they may have, and they, will. <laughs> and they will. I'll make sure of that. Crayons. But great reminders and do yeah. it at the speed of cash. Do not ever, ever go into debt to upgrade your house. And I'm talking about the biggest renovations to the smallest ones. It's not Don't worth do it. it. Go to Amazon, go to Target, go to Home Goods, and do it all on a budget and stick to it. That's right. That's and and again, my big thing too would be with homes like what we what we need versus what we want, and it's changed. Go back to the '90s, simpler times, simpler times. So true. All right, George, it's time for our last segment, Guilty as Charged. Wow. 
Okay, this is where our producer, Lindsay, comes up with a question. Uh, maybe it's incriminating. We don't know. It's borderline ethical. I'm fairly nervous about and it. And if we have done this, we got to take a drink. Okay, what's okay. the question for today, Lindsay? Have you ever fudged the numbers on your budget to feel better? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Rachel's cooking the books all the time. All, oh, oh, last month, grocery and restaurants were, I, I don't know what we were doing. I literally look at it, I'm like, I don't know how we spent that much on food. But we did. But I just upped it a little bit. And you know what I did, George? What'd you do? This is probably very guilty. You took it away from the kids? I took it. <laughs> Oh, no. The dog didn't no. eat, but Rachel got I, to eat I out. have thrown a nail salon um, transaction into Amelia's category. I've done that before. Just threw it right in because oh I thought she loves nails. Without her consent. <laughs> Without her consent. Yep, I did. Oh, my goodness. No, I took it out of our – out of our like, we have a savings line item that will save extra income. And I lowered it oh. by a few hundred bucks to finish out the food category of Dang. the month. So That's I took real. it out. Of, I didn't even go and take it out of miscellaneous that had, like – extra money in it. I was like, I don't want to move any categories this month. So I'm taking it out of our savings. And threw poor little Amelia under the bus. And I did put a nail salon uh, transaction <laughs> in her. So when okay. you get to heaven. How about you? Have you fudged the budget? At the pearly gates, they're going to be like, Rachel, we got to talk about it. Before you come in here, we got to talk about that time. And the dip is expensive, the nails these days. That's what I get. I get the dip. And I'm still confused pricey. about all of that. It hurts my brain, but I'm happy for you. The nails look great. Okay, I want to know about you, George. Have you okay, fudged the budget? Okay, for sure. Yeah, so we've been in moving mode. And therefore, we literally did not cook a single meal for 30 days straight. We were what? just surviving on hope, a prayer, and like microwave tacos. Stop it. And so our food budget skyrocketed because we had no energy to cook a single meal when you're in moving oh, mode. Oh, so sad. Georgie, Thank you, Rachel. Are you okay? So, are you okay? Yes, I, Doing I've, okay now? I cooked the books in the Poor budget, George. moved it all around. We were still in budget, but we spent way more on food than we ever should have. Yeah. Oh, food man. No ragrets. It gets you. And these days, it's just expensive eating out. Wait, what'd you say? No ragrets. It's an inside thing, Rachel. The, he got a tattoo that says no rag Who R -A -G. Did he? Who is he? A guy on the internet. <laughs> oh, it's like a Lord. meme. Do I have to... Rachel, are you a boomer secretly? I, I feel like it. Deep okay, in my part of this times. podcast is me just explaining pop culture <laughs> to Rachel. Maybe less Bachelor and more memes are in your future. Oh we'll man! Her. Okay, so we're both guilty. We got to drink. We got to. All right, sip, I'll drink sip to that. that uh, sip that screwdriver, George. Oh, Enjoy gosh. it. Enjoy mm. every second of it. Yeah, I'm getting my vitamin D and calcium in. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, if you have a guilty as charged question, DM us on Instagram and let us know, and it might make an upcoming episode of the show. Yeah, we'd love to hear. Love to hear. All right, who finished our drink? You, George. You I got a lot left because I'm just straight up drinking orange juice, Rachel. It's a lot of sugar for me. I know there, there I is. Watch there my is physique, some sugar for sure. Know? Okay, so what do you rate it? What do you rate the screwdriver? I'm gonna give it a two out of ten. Wow. I think five year old <gasps> George would be like, "Wow, this is delicious <laughs> because it's just orange juice." Why is a five year old drinking? I don't condone that. I'm giving I don't know. it an eight because we're recording on a Friday. And it's kind of a brunch situation is what it feels like. That's so fair. So I'm very happy with my situation. I just want it a little crispier. I prefer a mimosa over a screwdriver. Oh, like a little, a little sparkle. If I'm just going to drink orange juice, throw a little champs in there. Yeah, that's fair. I could yeah, – yeah, I know. All right, so the cost breakdown is if you make it at home – it's probably, what, two bucks? About two bucks. Depending on the type of vodka you use, the type of orange juice, you're looking at two bucks. And if you go to a drink. fancy schmancy brunch place at like a nice hotel, you're, you're going to pay, what, 12 And 15? Rachel has done that for sure. $12, $15. So. I'm just going to CVS and I'll just make my own in the hotel room <laughs> for two bucks. Swirl it around in a Yeti and bring it on down to brunch. I wouldn't wish it Classy. upon my worst enemy. Classy, George. All right, you guys, thanks so much for listening to this episode. Make sure to follow us on social. And even if you want to subscribe to this podcast, hit that subscribe and follow button to learn more about money and what's going on in our culture today. And, and you get a free drink recipe. It's free. We're not charging for this. We're not. We're giving people the you information. You can find it on the internet anyways. We're saving you all the ads you'd have to go through on some blog. <laughs> so there you go. Check out the show notes. New episodes every Thursday. Can't wait to see you next week. I'm George Camel. I'm Rachel Cruz. This has been The Smart Money Happy Hour. Thank you.